the curious case of Benjamin Beatdowns, part, you know, 147. Yeah. <laughs> He's on your left playing Blue White Geist. I would assume the same list or very close to the one that we saw uh, Margaret Horvoholtz play in round one as the two of them were talking about this deck yep. Friday at the office before. Oh, working hard. Hardly working. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he's on your left. Ben, a player, you know, he's, he's sort of in the background now, doesn't play as much Magic as he used to, but I think three or four Grand Prix top eights, uh, lost... Na national team appearance. National team, lost playing for top eight of Pro Tour. I mean, four, three or four years ago, he was, you know, one of one of numerous people who have at one time been labeled the future of American Magic. Yes, someone I did not want to play given the opportunity. Uh, Sean Johnson is his opponent on the right with blue, white, red mid-range. And we saw this matchup actually round one. Yes. Um, Mark Herberholtz was playing blue, white, Geist. Uh, his opponent was playing blue, white, red mid-range. And I mean, we went to three games. Uh, the games were close, very entertaining. I expect more of the same here. Uh, very similar matchup, very similar builds of deck as well. So. Uh, it'll be interesting. We'll see as both players have just started making their additional land drops. Ben has done some cantripping with Thought Scour, and we'll see if he has the Geist to get things rolling here on turn three. Yep, Sean with all of his collared mana, leading off with Seaman's Clifftop Retreat, and now a Sulphur Falls. And we're going to see Ben cycle the Azorius Shimmer in the end step. No Geist of St. Traff from either player, so we're going to move right on to the mid game here without the troublesome 2 2 uh, being in play. Ben without a fourth land, so he's going to look for it with Thought Scour. He does finds, find it. Finds a planes and a creature for his Moreland Haunt as well. So Just how he drew it up. Yeah, not a bad turn. And we're going to see Sean take a similar approach, cycling a Zorius Charm on Ben's end step and get himself a new card. See if he is lacking in the Lance Department or not. He drew a Zorius Charm. And he has a Desolate Lighthouse. So he has one copy of Desolate, he actually has one copy of Desolate Lighthouse, one copy of Moreland Haunt, and one copy of Slayer Stronghold. So he actually has three colorless lands in his deck, and you won't find any Cavern of Souls here. The Stronghold strikes me as greedy. Desolate Lighthouse and Moreland Haunt are pretty awesome. Yeah. Stronghold might be a little bit on the greedy side, but we'll see. I mean, it could be a game breaker. I mean, it's one heck of a card, provides a unique effect, lets, uh, lets Restoration Angel actually beat opposing Restoration Angels in fights, so... We'll see, as we do see Sean cast Restoration Angel when Ben tapped out. Ben cast Rest Restoration Angel when Sean tapped out. So yeah. we just want to get those in play. Neither, neither player really maximizing uh, their angels here. Just want to get some stuff into play. Definitely a priority for Ben with a deck full of unsummons and, and feeling of dreads. The pressure is on him to be very aggressive, not try to get too concerned with value. Maximize his, his mana and get on the board as fast as quickly as possible. Absolutely, as we do see a cliff top retreat here, and now we are going to see a Geist of Saint Draft, and that's probably the most important card in this matchup. Hit play. Could have seen a Thundermaw Hellkite there from Sean. Would have been a, a pretty big beating actually, as he does have two copies of those in his deck, but he does not have one just yet. Ben has just drawn his own Geist of Saint Draft, so we might we might move to Legend Rule here. Although it's unclear how much Ben actually cares about it. All right, he's going to cast he it. Care, he cares enough. He cares enough. Say, when well, you have Restoration Angel back on D, uh, maybe you're willing to let that thing stick and do other things with your mana, but it is a big risk allowing it to be in play, so. Sliding through Ben's hand, you do see two copies of Unsummon along with a Restoration Angel and a Feeling of Dread, so his hand's pretty good as far as establishing the tempo game goes. He just needs to get a little bit further ahead on board so he can keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Sean is just going to pass his turn back. One card that you do see in Sean's hand that you don't typically find in these blue white red mid range builds, Patrick, is two copies. He has two copies, one in his hand of Essence Scatter. Yeah, and, and Essence Scatter I know gets a lot of uh, flack because of Cavern of Souls, but I actually think it's a uh, dramatically underplayed card yeah. in the format. They A lot of these decks have you know a variety of creature types, and so Cavern, you can know, you. They set it on one thing, but you can still count on the other thing. Some of these decks can't even afford to play a cavern anymore because they have enough colored spells where they're leaning on Ravnica duels more than caverns. And so uh, I'm a big fan of the card uh, in the metagame, even though it gets a lot of flack because of cavern. So an end of turn angel from Sean met by an end of turn angel from Ben. Seems like we've seen this before as we see Sean does draw a third Restoration Angel. Now, the thing for Sean here that he has to be careful of is, you know, he's sliding in Restoration Angels through Counter Magic, yes, but one card that Ben does have is Feeling of Dread. He has copies of that card in his deck, and he has a copy of it in his hand right now. Yeah. Feeling of Dread is, you know, two creatures, obviously, it just lines up perfectly for what Ben wants to accomplish. 
tap those things, get the beats in, do it again, get the beats in again, and then just kind of tempo you out. Yeah, it's a, you know, if, if and particularly if Sean hasn't done a lot of either testing of the matchup or hasn't really seen this deck before, uh, being unaware of Feeling of Dread can lead to playing the game very incorrectly. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not popular, uh, it's not a popular card yet, or it's not popular enough that people are used to thinking, okay, Feeling of Dread. You know, it's another card that comes to the forefront, as you are going to see him cast one right now. So Ben will take care of those two angels for now, and you are going to see him serve across. And there you're going to see a Restoration Angel here from Sean, the third one of the game. And you're going to see an Unsummon here from Ben. Get that out of the way. Yeah, Ben's already committed to this attack, even though that's not an ideal use of brain of, of uh, Unsummon, rather. He doesn't have a choice. He's, yeah. he's committed. Now we do see Sean just pick up that Restoration Angel. He's going to take 7 to the face and move down to 13. And now those Angels will untap. Those are not up there. there. That is not Blinding Beam. It's just Feeling <laughs> Dread. So we see Sean's hand. He does have a copy of that Essence Scatter, that Restoration Angel that we know about, and a Zorish Charm as well. And it looks like we're going to see an attack here. As you see, yeah, he's just going to start cracking back, slowing down Feeling of Dread, basically. Yep, but this is, this is the type of game that Ben wants to play. Absolutely. As you're going to see a spirit token here on the end step, and we're going to see Sean slide in that third Restoration Angel while Ben Shields are down. Now, one thing you also need to keep in mind with how this game is playing back and forth, Patrick, because it looks to be a racing situation, what people call the hidden mode on Azorius Charm, the lifelink mode, yep. that could come into play here and really be a big deal. So that angel gets unsummoned again. And feeling a dread is still at the ready here. I yes. Mean. This is a horrible spot. This is a horrible spot for Sean. And so now Sean is going to finally use that Azorius Charm, it looks like. Yeah. To probably put a Restoration Angel back on top. And, and you know, that's difficult because Azorius Charm, I mean, three modes, three good things to do with the card. You could certainly see an argument for the lifelink portion of this, but it, it, he's just too far behind now. So yeah. feeling a dread is just going to cost too much, too much trouble. Now we are going to see Azorius Charm. Ben having a Dissipate in his hand right now as well, considering, am I going to Dissipate this? I mean, Dissipate here is pretty good, actually. It's not bad. I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm working on the assumption here that we're targeting the Angel, right? I'm working on the same assumption, yes. I can't, yeah. imagine, I can't imagine him cantripping or, or lifelinking here, so. Right. And you are going to see Dissipate take care of this. And that was Ben's draw step for the turn, so uh, a favorable draw for him. Sean ends up taking 8 damage, pushing down to 5, and he is facing a what looks to be a lethal attack next turn. And again, for those of you who are either just tuning in or can't really see Ben's graveyard, there is a feeling of dread in there still. Yes, the key. Yeah. Sean draws his card, he draws a detention sphere. Now that is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can see him sort of furrow his brow a little bit. Hey, do we want to just start over here? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you see him kind of shaking his head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can clear out four. It's not so bad. I can kill four Restoration Angels. That's pretty sweet. Two of them are mine, unfortunately. Yes. Because... I can also clear out two Spirit Tokens, but that doesn't really seem to be ideal. I mean, as odd as it is to pull the trigger on this, as you see him move to his attack step, Ben can't Feeling of Dread, so he's going to... He is going to take a look. Ben can't Feeling of Dread right now. Flashback is one blue, one colorless. So he can just come across here, put Ben down to six, and then... Detention Sphere plus, assuming he has another white mana, yeah, Detention Sphere plus I have Restoration Angel at the ready. Sure. Doesn't seem like a bad turn. I mean, if we're attacking here, I think we're almost certainly casting the Detention Sphere. I am inclined to agree with you. So we see him rearranging his mana here. And it's almost begrudgingly. Yeah. Going to pull just, the trigger. Just double checking to make sure this is... Yeah, can't, yeah. Be can't believe can't believe this is gonna happen. But Restoration Angels, all of you, leave. Yep, you're under arrest, all of you. Yeah, we still have our our angel. We still have our angel. We still have our essence. We, we, we need, yeah, we need to cast this now, and yeah. and, and Sean's on board. And Sean passes right back. So Sean, I'd say ahead on the board now. Life total Ben is ahead, but Sean is ahead on the board. And you see Ben does draw an unsummon for the turn. See exactly what Ben wants to get going here. He has an unsummon in his hand. He has Moreland Haunt, of course, at the ready, and then he has Feeling of Dread in the graveyard. So he has to balance his use of these resources to get those last point, last points of damage through. Yep. I'm not. 
I'm not positive he has another creature for the haunt, which is the big problem. Yeah. Here. You see, Ben just does play his land and say go. So we know the last card is on summon. I'm feeling a dread. Sean's going to play that cliff top retreat. Ben. Going to cast feeling a dread. Okay. Take care of that. All right. So he finally does blow the second half of that card. And now we see in Sean's graveyard, or she in Sean's hands, excuse me, Patrick, Snapcaster Mage is there. But Ben draws one of his own. Woo-hoo-hoo, <laughs> boy. He draws Thought Scour. Excuse me. Excuse me. Really need a creature here. Yes, he does. Draws a Zorius Charm. Going to come across for two. Can Ben find a way to get those last couple of points in? I mean, Sean's hand's loaded at this point. Yeah. You know, it, no reach in Ben's deck, we know that. Yeah. The only thing that could be roughly described as reach is uh, Rune Chatter's Pike. But that's not the same thing, he still needs to connect. As we do see Sean activate a Desolate Lighthouse on the end step. Draw a card, discard a card, we do know that he does have those two Essence Scatters in his hand. He draws a Mountain, and he has a Snapcaster Mage there as well. So now he's in, now Ben really needs does really need to close this game. Out. Yes, because now Sean's gonna have the ability to start filtering his draws with the Desolate Lighthouse, and we do see the Restoration Angel come across here. And we are gonna see an Azorius Charm here from Ben. Gonna put that attacker back on top, but we can still you know, we can even still loot and get our Angel back Absolutely. if we wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. And Sean does just pass the turn back. Ben examines his graveyard, it's gonna untap, take a draw step, an island. And Ben says, all right, beatdowns. Do what I do best. And we're gonna see some lands get Let's moved see. around here. Up to here. So we're gonna see Snapcaster Mage. We'll see what that is targeting. You figure he probably wants to establish this, Patrick, as he's going to see an Azorius Charm of the Token. He probably wants to establish this just because he knows he has Restoration Angel coming. Yes. So for the blink of that, plus being able to blink, plus activate Lighthouse, this is just good use of Sean's mana for the turn. And you are going to see a Lighthouse activation now. He's going to draw that Angel that was put back on top by Ben's Azorius Charm and discard that Mountain. So yeah, good, so, good yeah, turn there. Very good use of resources. He still gets to ki kill one of the Spirit Tokens, which is what would have happened anyway if he had just played Restoration Angel to block. Yep. And now he has Snapcaster at the ready as well. And Ben is obviously quite low himself. He can get back to doing what he wants to do, which is attacking Ben's life total. Yep. So, favorable spot here for Sean outside of being at two life. Yep. He does Revelation just... is the one, like, that just... I had to assume we're going to Essence Scatter this thing, Yeah, right? I think I think that there's nothing better coming here to counter, so he's just going to take care of that right now. Essence Scatter there from Sean, one of his two copies. Now, not, not looking so bad. Yeah, things are now quite, quite bad for, for Ben. Ben serving in with that Spirit Token, knowing that the Restoration Angel is there, but we know that Ben has an unsummon in his hand, and it looks like he's just gonna. He just probably feels like he just has to use it as he's going to target the Snapcaster Mage. We'll see what Sean's going to do here as he does bounce the Restoration Angel to get in that one point of damage. Ben hold, trying to get that yeah. last point through, just hanging around four to one. And of course, if, if at any point Sean just draws one of those red removal spells. Or Slayer, or, or Slayer Stronghold. Or, or, or Thundermaw Hellkite. Yeah. Which is what he's drawn for the turn. We'll see if he's going to cast that. He does I mean, Ben have, has no cards in hand, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't think he can activate Moreland Haunt. Maybe Sean second guesses himself here. Then again, maybe not. Okay. He, he even has access to four mana for, for Lighthouse and for Restoration Angel. It seems almost foolproof. You guys I, would, see, I would attack. Yeah, as you see Thunderball Hellkite on the screen, Thunderball right. Hellkite wraps it up. What does it? No. What? Oh, sorry, Essence oh, Scatter. Yeah, okay. Essence Scatter. Never mind. He blocks her, he goes to two. Now Ben can see. Okay. okay, we were a little hasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, Sean Johnson, up a game with blue light red mid range. Yep. And what I think you and I would consider, and based off of Mark Herberholtz's match earlier and previous matches, Matt Nass versus Max Teets, the Star Seekers Invitational, a favorable matchup for Ben. Yeah, I mean, the deck's a lot more efficient and streamlined. Now, Sean in that game basically drew none of his red cards except for Thunderball, right? He wasn't trying to try to cobble together value out of the pillars and searing spheres that we've seen. Correct. Other blue white red players choke on in this matchup. Yeah. So he got basically the blue white draw with a Thundermaw Hell Kite, yeah. which is totally fine. Absolutely. And it certainly didn't hurt that the Desolate Lighthouse was able to get activated twice, filter his draws, let him get through some of the garbage, see an extra card per turn. Yeah. The Lighthouse was good that game. Slayer Stronghold would have been really good that game too. Good when there's that angel battle. Yeah. Would have been insane, actually. I mean, giving it plus two, plus so, oh, and Vigilance does not hurt at all. Would have been very, very good in that particular game. Now, I know, Patrick, that you have Ben Zeklis in front of you. What's going to help him? What's going to turn it? Three Dispels and a Negate and two Jaces and three Supreme Burks if he wants to bring in the Rats. That's the okay. good stuff. Okay. He's um, got Drog Skull Reaver, which I don't think is really for this matchup. I mean, particularly with Sean showing, you know, main deck essence scatter i don't think you want to be in seven and eight mana creature land yeah. but dispel negate and chase certainly very good and then supreme verdict as well if he wants to try to take that path now taking a look here at sean's necklace and sean's necklace is a lot different than the uh his necklace is a lot different than the previous blue red mid-range deck that we saw on camera you're gonna find a, just a lot of different cards here two copies of thunderbolt I like Which, a Thunderbolt. I like a Thunderbolt a lot. Obviously, we just saw Restoration Angel, Restoration Angel battles taking place, so I like that a lot. Two copies of Spectral Flight for the, you know, kind of ha-ha, I win with Geist the Trap, which is, you know, an interesting route to be taking. Uh, you see a copy of Feeling and Dread. You see a, a fourth copy of Pillar of Flame. Not so much here. Additional copy of Detention Sphere. Two copies of Jace Memory Adept, which both players have access to. You know, you could be born into those in just the Legend rule. Yes. Um, two copies of Counterflux, which would bring up would bring Sean up to four copies of that. A great card in the mirror, along with two copies of Dispel and two copies of Supreme Verdict. So he has a lot of cards, Patrick, that you, he can kind of sideboard out those bad red cards, those Searing Spheres and those Pillar of Flames. And even Detention Sphere is a little bit iffy here. And Sidon is some just really, really nice cards. I think Thunderbolt is an awesome sideboard card to have here. I uh, think so, too. If you look at these matchups, uh, I, I'm assuming the blue-white-red mirror is very similar. But these games are all about Restoration Angel. Almost all the combat damage that gets dealt is through Restoration Angel. A lot of the good blocking that gets done is also through Restoration Angel. And so having a card in your sideboard that, you know, interacts well with Snapcaster Mage, that, you know, can go to the head if... Restoration Angel doesn't present itself, and is an awesome answer to that card. Uh, I think it's a very excellent use of sideboard space by Sean. I 100% agree with you. I mean, it seems like that's going to be a card that plays a pretty interesting role here. But one thing that's interesting about this deck is that we don't typically see, you know, we see like maybe one, maybe two copies of Counterflux. We see a lot of copies of Counterflux here, and, we, and what, we, what we see when we take a look at this deck, you see two copies of Essence Scatter in the main deck, a card you typically don't find in the main. What it says to me is Sean built his deck in mind of beating like blue white red mid range and blue white geist, and you know not really so concerned about these decks that have cavernous souls like the black red zombies or you know like a, like the mid range green decks. It seems like he's more hell bent on beating like these blue white mirror type decks. Yeah, and count and uh, and counterflux seems like an awesome card to have in your sideboard if you're working under the assumption that most of these other similar decks are going to be bringing in dispel. Yes, this is just I definitely counter your restoration angel or your Thunderball Hellkite, or your Jace, or whatever, or your, your Sphinx's Revelation. There's no engineering you can set up to get to a spot where you have your awesome card with Dispel backup. Yeah. And when we saw, you know, Mark play on camera in round one, Dispel was bananas against his, yeah. his blue white right opponent. Completely absurd. Yeah, so I do like, I, I think Counterflux is a pretty awesome sideboard card to have here, because a lot of these blue white decks and blue white red decks are bringing in a bunch of Dispels. No, I like... You know, as far as blue at red mid-range decks go, you could have your opinion on this deck one way or the other, but it seems like that this particular version that Sean Johnson is playing, it seems like, you know, he has plans in mind with what he is trying to accomplish here. Yes. And it's very clear that he is looking, you know, he's, it seems like he's pretty well set up against, you know, zombies, he's pretty well set up against these blue-white geist decks, maybe a little bit softer to your Naya mid-range decks, your, and, you know, maybe your reanimator type decks, but for this for this matchup, it seems like he's doing okay. So we see Augur Boss miss there for Ben. And I think Ben, ben is missing a second blue mana and has dissipate in hand so you're gonna see a steam bounce there from sean he's just gonna pass back ben does draw an island okay so sitting sitting okay 
see if he has a Geist, as you know. One of the things that you see on the deck list here, and we saw, I saw this on Marks as well, is you, normally in this Geist of St. Traffic, you see four guys, but I see on the deck list in front of me, they scribbled out the four and put a three instead. Yep. No, I mean, if you're anticipating certainly a lot of Naya decks and more red green, green white, you know, four, four guys to say traps is a lot to have. Yeah. Makes you a little bit softer against this deck, though, as we are going oh, to sure. see just a hollow fountain here from Sean. Ben with a think twice on Sean's end step. Get that velocity going for his deck. Take a draw, draws to spell. The Zorius Charm was his draw off of the think twice. And you do see Cavern of Souls in Ben's hand, and they are just playing one copy of that, and we'll see what he chooses to name. Probably the Angel. Angel. I think because yeah. he has Restoration Angel in hand. And it is confirmed that it is naming Angel, and that's exactly what Sean drew for the turn. What, uh, he drew into Spell, excuse me. It looks like Restoration Angel in the corner there. But we're going to see a Sulfur Pulse. So we're going to see some Dispel Wars, I think. Yeah, probably. Coming, coming shortly to a theater near you. But right now, we're going to see guys to say Trap This start. is gutsy. I mean, this is giving Ben a huge opening here to just land his Restoration Angel. Or just, you know, be able to use a Counterspell. I guess he has to spell back up, so... He yeah, could counter is... back over that, but... It's kind of interesting, too, right? Like, you know, he plays it with a... As we're going to see the Restoration Angel blink the Augur Bullets. He did play it with that mana open, kind of like, I dare you to counter this, because I'm ready to spell back. All right, and Ben has missed again on his Augur trigger. Augur is not his friend. Unsummoned drawn for Ben. If anyone would like to see that off the Augur. And he put a pike on the bottom, too. Yeah. So that's a big deal there. Patrick, you do see two copies of Unsummon, you see a Dispel, you see an Azorius Charm in Ben's hand, so, and you see that dissipate. It looks like he's going to cycle Azorius Charm. And that's going to resolve. What do you pick up there? A Thought, Thought Scour. Scour. You know, it kind of looks like he's looking for a land drop, maybe? Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he's, he's, he is without lands, so. You know, I'm not quite sure exactly what he's searching for. Maybe, yeah, he's like, I'm kind of desperate for an answer to this Glycus ain't trap, but we see... He's just going to hold back the Restoration Angel and maybe give it his best shot to block. Yeah, he certainly can't race here. And his hand's not set up to be able to defend himself against him many things because it's hard for him to cast his counters. He's missing colored mana. So he needs to just sort of hold the fort for a little while here until his hand gets a bit better. A tough situation here for Ben. I mean, Cavern of Souls, again, this is what's kind of great about this format. There's these opportunity costs that come to play in these lands. Yeah, definitely when you have a bunch of cheap cantrips and Azorius charms and Dissipates and stuff, Cavern is not a freebie. Yeah. Not by any stretch. Because so we're going to see a Thought Scour from Ben on the end step, as Sean did just pass back and not attack. Now, Patrick, Sean does have an Azorius charm in his hand. You know, he could have attacked maybe Ben Boss with Restoration Angel, he charms him back to the top of the deck. You know, do you feel okay passing there just with those five mana up? Or? Yeah, for sure. I think that attacking, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to... You know, Azorius Charm with Restoration Angel and leave an Augur in play and let him draw an Angel. It sure. seems like it, to hit him from 16 to from 20 to 16 doesn't doesn't seem like the right time. Okay. I mean, Ben's got so many different you know ways of protecting himself. And you need to make sure the board's fairly overwhelming before you start giving up tempo and, and card advantage in that way. I feel like. And now Ben's going on the aggressive side. He's coming in with Restoration Angel right now. Looks as though Sean has taken it. And he, ben might just kick it right back. That's what he does. So a mitt full of instants. And of course, when you're playing against these blue-white flash slash geist decks, could be anything. Yeah. A lot for Sean to think about. Very but challenging. He is coming across here with Geist of St. Traff. You see the angel. Now we're going to see Snapcaster Mage pounce right on in. And I assume that we're just going to be trying to get a block on the Geist of Chain Trap, maybe a little bit of value out of our graveyard here. Yeah. Not now sure will we have a target on just yet. Now Sean really, really thinking about, you know, do I want that to resolve? What do I want to do with this is we're going to see 
He's fingering the mana. We're gonna see Searing Spear target that before blockers. With that effect, of, like, likely with the targeting on the yeah. stack. But we will get confirmation on exactly what that staff caster mage is targeting briefly. So we're just waiting to see if, I suppose, if Ben's going to be responding to this. I mean, we know he has, what, Dispel Dissipate in hand? Yeah. You just put just three mana. Also, two on summons there as well. Yeah. So, you know, there's always the unique play of snap cat, of unsummoning a Snapcaster Mage and then recasting it around this Searing Spear. Yeah. yeah this, this is going to be a turn where both players are really jockeying back and forth, as you do see a Dispel here from Ben. You're going to see a Dispel back here from Sean. And now... You're going to let it go? I'm a little... Uh, snap, yeah, Snapcaster Mage targeted the Azorius Charm. Which I suppose is why Ben is not going to be unsummoning his Snapcaster here. And just okay, just bottoms up the Angel. Yep. Gets in front of the guy. Just doesn't take any damage. Okay. So not a bad exchange. Uh, it's a little. But, I mean, it's a little rough. Ben's very light on resources. He doesn't have much in the way of philosophy. Pressure on the board. No answers to Geist's ain't trapped. I mean, he can definitely fend this off for a while, but in terms of. Uh, actually finding some positive momentum, he's pretty far away. Because now we do see Restoration Angel come across again. There's an untap. So again, mulling over his options. Ben sliding over hand of dis dissipate, dispel, and two unsummons, it appears. That is correct. So he has all of this. He has some nice temporary, you know, temporary effects. He has some counter magic. Doesn't have the doesn't have a great clock. Yep. Is and, the problem. And this is, you know, talking about the sideboarding a little bit, this is a place where Thunderbolt would be insane. Yeah. Because, you know, Ben's leaning so heavily on this Restoration Angel to give him enough you know, momentum and power to to win this game, even though Sean had, even though Ben's got like, you know, these whatever reactive tools he has in, in his hand, they're all predicated on being able to attack the three in turn with that Restoration Angel. Yep. That's the only way those spells and unsummons make any difference. And if his, uh, if his angel got thunderbolted here, it would just be very, very hard for Ben to win. Complete nightmare. Now here's an interesting play, Patrick, as we see a Sphinx's Revelation in Sean's hand. And, you know, it, 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 I, I don't know how realistic it is, but, you know, maybe unsummoning the Restoration Angel and then recasting it to kind of ambush the guy's the same trap. But, I mean, that, that would have to cause, that would have to mean that Sean has nothing. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah, you can all, that play only works if Sean is on, has actual nothing to do. It's hard to really convince yourself that that's the right play to make. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And now, Ben. So I, see, I really like the way that Ben has managed the life total of this game because now he's attacking him for a three-turn clock. Right. We went from 18 to 15, 15 to 12, and now Ben is actually serving in with both of his guys now where he wasn't before. Yep. So now the race is on. Right, and that turn, you know, that, that sequence there is very subtle, but I think it, it's something of a turning point in this match where Sean did actually nothing on his turn with any of his mana. Didn't even try to cast anything. And now, you know... Ben shortened the game from uh, down to a three, now two turn clock. And basically Sean took an entire turn off of not doing anything. Yep. I think it was important. I'm not sure exactly what was in Sean's hand. I know that he had, you know, uh, a Sphinx's Revelation. I think it was really important for him to do something that turn. So you do see him just pass back. Now Angel's gonna go away. Ben is content with how things are. Yeah. Ben just holding a mid full of things. He does draw oh, a that, And that's a huge draw too. That's a, a potential chump blocker as well. So we can see him come across for four again. He's gonna knock Sean down to four. So Ben done a really nice job as far as, as life total management on both sides. Yeah. Oh, both yeah. Sean's and his own. And now his hand's actually fairly, fairly loaded. And I'm sure he's thinking, I wish I had one more blue source. But other than that, I think he's he's sitting pretty well right now with you know a couple copies of, of Unsummon, a, co a copy of Dispel, a Dissipate there, the Moreland Haunt being able to create a Chump Blocker. He's doing okay. And that's another, that's again, another turn that Sean just took off. Yep. 
And now is he gonna is he gonna try to Azorius charm for a life link here? But now, you know, Ben's set up to fight this counter war certainly. Let's see if Ben is okay going down. Going down to four, does he want to unsummon me the angel to buy himself a little bit of breathing room? And that's exactly what he's going to do. Also, he just has to use his mana on something, yeah. right? He can't just sit here saying, go, this is what's getting Sean into trouble. Is like he's just had two turns in a row where he hasn't cast anything. Yep. You see the unsummon happen. Ben is going to go down to eight. You can't take it with you, man. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> you got to. You got to. You don't get extra points. Yeah. We're having spells at the end. Still had all these, as it were. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with, uh, with Ben here. I thought this game wasn't even gonna be close. Yeah, it didn't feel like it. It yeah. didn't feel like it. Did we just say, did we just say go again? And yeah, no spell there from Sean. Ben's gonna make a token. Really makes you wonder what Sean's threatening over there. He's been holding that Sphinx Revelation for a long time. Drawing yeah. an island is huge there. Yeah, oh yeah. Now huge draw. It's totally set up to fight this kind of war. Now you're going to see Azorius Charm. And the fight is going to begin. Dispel. We're going to see a Dispel back. Alright, so those are going to resolve. Azorius Charm is still on the stack. Oh, dispel. Ben showed an unsummon on accident there. How much counter magic do you have? I think he's got two Snapcasters and a Sphinx of Revelation. Forever. So I don't think he can. I don't think he has enough to to fight over the discipline that's in Ben's hand as well. Get uh, Snapcaster Mage. Now, oddly enough, Ben actually needs. If he dissipates this, he's in trouble because he's can go Snapcaster with the left, the three mana left over, you can go Snapcaster Dissipate. He actually needs to let the Snapcaster resolve and then use the Dissipate on whatever gets flashed back. So right. there's another, which Ben dissipate. does. Somehow, yeah, somehow does. Somehow knows. Dissipate that. And now that's Xaxes. Well, well, yeah, that is exactly. you're right. Because that gets countered. Snapcaster Rage can get in front of the Augur of Wolos. Well, there's four, takes four in. in the air. Oh, Benny. Oh, Benny. The curious case of Benjamin. That is, down. wow. How does, oh. he, how does he know not to disappear oh. the guy? Oh. I mean, I guess he knows it turns on another out, right? But that was, I got to say, I know, I don't know what the hell happened that game. I have no idea how Ben got that one. <laughs> was, when they put that on the replay, I'm gonna sit back and watch that game at some point. Yeah, Ben just, just so, I, I mean, I think at some point there, you know, Sean's hand started getting glutted with like pretty expensive action. He had Swings of Revelation plus those Snapcasters, and, and the Snapcasters actually are kind of expensive cards. He needed to just cast, he needed to cast something. something. He, he had needed to do to cast something. something. And, and you know, he ends the game with basically, he ends the game with that Swings of Revelation in his hand. There was two turns. Maybe even three turns, I don't know the exact count, where you have the opportunity to just slam that into a counter spell. Which isn't ideal because obviously you want your awesome card to resolve, but that's one less counter spell you have to play around later, which yeah. is important. I mean he could have fired it off. Well, I mean, for example, he can fire it off, leave one up, and dispel something, right? Yeah. And it's two counters out of Ben's hand. Now you want to tap now you have a hand with Snapcaster Mage at the minimum, plus whatever else. Yeah. And now you know, we can find something to do, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, I think I think just passing back those two consecutive turns, he just didn't have enough mana to fight over everything. He was in firm control of the game from like a four position perspective, everything, but Ben was able to just eke it out because Ben was just more efficient with his mana. I think that's a case right there where, you know, it's very easy for him to just untap, draw his card, attack with Nexus and trash, see what happens. And I don't think that he ever really established a game plan outside of doing that, you know? Right. Because what happened was, you know, Ben was kind of playing defensively, and this is, again, something that we talked about during the broadcast a little bit earlier. Then he turned the tide, but he turned the tide oh so suddenly because he was attacking the Restoration Angel, but then finally that Augur of Bullets said, hey, I'm coming in here too. Yeah. And then everything turned, and it went from, you know, eight, from 18 to 15, 15 to 12, 
down to eight, down to four, and we're not in the same situation anymore. Also worth knowing that he attacked him for exact lethal. Yes. So that, that auger attack is a Yeah, that auger attack huge changed deal. everything. And it's so subtle because it, as an opponent, you're just thinking, oh, okay, like auger's getting in here now too. That's kind of interesting. And, you know, things just kind of, things just really, really change that game, but in such a subtle, subtle way. Yeah, I, that was, that was a super, so, I mean, that was, a, it's subtle stuff, right? It's yes. real subtle stuff, but that was a very impressive game. So now we see both players taking a look at their opening seven. I believe Sean has already kept his seven, and we have Benny looking over his six quite a bit. Deciding if he's going to keep this one. He's going to mulligan. He's going to yeah. take a mulligan. Benny B. Dallas, not the type of man to Hollywood for the camera. That's he's taking like that. It's a borderline hand. It's just so important, and, and I am guilty. I, I am certainly guilty of this. I've done this quite a bit in games that get long and drawn out like that. Just kind of having to take that step back and reassess. Yep. Because it's so easy to just keep, just like you know, his hand is all instants, and they're all good cards. It's like two Snapcaster Mages, a couple of spells, Six Revelation. If, if, if I'm in that position with that hand, I'm thinking, okay, like I, I don't think I'm losing. You know, I've got all these great cards in my hand. I've got like all this versatility of things I can do. When in reality, you know, he has to think to himself, I probably have to run one of these cards into a counter spell just to get like that counter spell out of his hand. Yep. And that's a strange like thought process to take. Of the, you know, maybe it's just correct to just go Sphinx of Revelation. You need to counter this, or I need you to counter this. Well, yeah, I I, I think it's very easy to get in the the mindset of Sean. It's like, well, I'm winning the race. I'm either attacking four to three or six to four. I have a ton of gas in my hand. So I can just sort of chill out and wait for Ben to make an action and then I can respond as appropriate. Where the whole time Ben was actually sculpting the game to compress the game down and win the damage race before Sean could really deploy his, his, uh, his card. So Sean was actually in more danger the whole time than, than it actually, you know. Did he ever maybe, realize? Yeah, right. Yeah. As we see, Ben does keep his six. We are off here. We're going to see an auger. Uh, da, 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 da. And I believe he ben, was thinking about it. I believe Ben kept a one lander there on the draw with uh, with Fox Scour. So now he has to think twice. Augur Scour. He's got a lot of cards to give him some velocity here. And what he's done is dodged a huge bullet. Yes, with oh, yeah. no geist, no geist from Sean. And he has hit. He's found two lands. One off of the think twice. One for his draw step. Glacial Fortress not joining us just yet. We're going to start with Augur Bolas. One, two, and three. Ooh, we Benny finally scour. found a spell. Well done. Augur actually helping Ben this game. You see Glacial Fortress, and he's going to pass back, just upping the velocity on this deck, getting, making sure he hits his land drops, finds his cantrips so he can get everything online. And now we see Geist of St. Traft. What do you mean did it help him? He, he was, Lily Grid Warden was just fine last game. That's touche. Touche. Blocked some stuff, attacked once. Yeah. Dealt a couple points of damage, as we're going to see Thought Scour here turn over Restoration Angel and a Mystery card. Ben draws a card. Draws another card, draws Rune Channer's Pike, and he does have that fourth land. The other card that he did reveal, I can't quite make it out actually, so I won't guess at it. Well, he's going to get that Restoration Angel in right now. Yep. Again, he's, he gets to hold down the fort for this turn unless Sean makes a huge commitment to the board. Yep. And then the following turn, or maybe not necessarily the following turn, but he's setting up a spot where he can land a Pike and then start going uh, going to work. Try to win that damage race again. Yep. We are going to see Ben reveal dissipate off of Rogger Bolas, put the other two away, and tr and pass it over. This would be another good spot for Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt or Thunder Maul. Yeah, either's fine. Cards with Thunder. Doesn't look like Sean has either one right now, so now he's going to have to craft a plan as we see him play the Glacial Fortress. And see also, I also see a Moorland Haunt over there in his hand. See a red card he's thumbing through, which I believe is a Searing Spear. And what you feeling see, a dread? What you see is that one copy of Feeling a Dread and a sideboard coming into play here. Tapping those guys, clearing the way for Geist. That's going to knock Benny down to 14. And Ben's got to, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's a six shot or whatever, but Ben's got to re be relieved. That's all that happened that turn because he was exposed there. Tapped out. A, a bunch of horrible stuff could happen. So for yeah. it to only be a feeling of dread. Kind of feels it's, like a win, right? Yeah. It would be nice, if, obviously, he would prefer to have a land drop here, but all told, that was... Sean could have certainly done much worse to bend that turn. Yeah. 
So now Ben has a lot of options in his hand. You guys can see his hand at home a little bit there. He's got a Dissipate that he found from Augur of Bolas. He has a Thought Scour, a Zorius Charm, a Rune Chanter's Pike, an Augur of Bolas. I believe there's a Snapcaster Mage hiding in there as well. So he's got a lot of things that he can do. He's a little bit choked on mana right yeah, now. Yeah, I think that was what he's thinking about, was whether or not he wants to spend a mana right now to try to dig for a land. He turns over two, draws Nine. one. Yep. Big draw. Yeah, pretty important that he hits his land drop here. So a lot of options, and this is just your classic case, as we've said multiple times that you got to get those spells out of his hand now. Yep, and I, I really like playing Augur here as well because it's very important for him to get a third blocker into play to try to mitigate feeling of dread. Yep. As we are going to see, Ben reveals a Dispel now, so Dispel can actually take care of feeling of dread if that's what Ben wants to fight over. As we do see Sean draw counterflux for the turn. I feel like Ben is just, just inevitably pulling ahead here. Slowly but surely. Yeah. We're going to see Desolate Lighthouse coming to play here from Sean. That's actually a lot more relevant than it looks, but he's going to be able to filter out some of his bad cards. Maybe find that card, that like a Thunderbolt that we were talking about, yeah. a card that could really turn things around for him right now. Maybe find that Thunder Maw Hellkite, but we are going to see Feeling of Dread here from Sean. I assume we're, just, if, if we're, if we're been here, I assume we're not fighting over this. We're probably just happy to take, to take four. Yep. Because you can still block the Geist with the remaining Augur. And this is, again, why it was very important for Ben to get that Augur into play last turn. Yep. You do see him just jump in front. Angel Token will be incoming in a moment, I'm sure. Assuming that he did remember the trigger. Or the Geist is in trapped. Perhaps that's what's being, perhaps that's up for debate right now. We will find out. All right, so it looks like the trigger was missed. So that is, uh, now that makes that feeling of dread, you know, that turn yeah, much, again disastrous for Sean. Ben is going to cycle and draw a card here, so that's a tough one there for Sean. Yep. As we are going to see Ben just cycle the Azorius Charm, puts his planes into play. I assume we're going for Pike here, right? We have plenty of stuff to fight over it with. Let's see if he chooses to establish, he wants to establish Pike. So we're going to see an attack here with the Restoration Angel. Ben is going to start going to work on Sean's life total now. You know, he's got a lot of options, of course. You can see, choose to establish Pike at this point. He's got Sphinx's Revelation. Bunch of counters, yeah. You know, a bunch of counters. You know, exactly what he wants to do is unclear. You know, if Sean, let's say, for example, activates Nestle Lighthouse in the end step, I think Ben just slams down Sphinx's Revelation for three. Yeah. Draw three, move up to 17, that sort of thing. He opted not to Lighthouse there. Maybe Sean. Well, he has Counterflux in hand, yeah. right? He wants yep. to keep his mana up. Yep. He doesn't want to put the shields down. Going to play Glacial Fortress here for the turn. But again, this is, you know, what we were talking about. Again, in round one with the Herbal Hole Smash. Look how often Ben is tapping out versus how often Sean is tapping out. Yep. Ben's just deploying things more efficiently. Now you're going to see Searing Spear. Searing Spear going to try to take out Hunger right. Boss. And yeah, Ben's happy to start fighting over this. I think you're very happy to trade your spell with the Searing Spear. Yes. And it, I, I'm not sure that would be the case in most situations, but the, the one that we're currently in, absolutely. Oh yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, Sean's only card of note here is that, that guy's the same trap, right? As long as that's on lock and you're hitting with your Restoration Angel, you gotta be happy with the way the game's proceeding. So we see Ben did flashback think twice at the end of Sean's turn. Just a little bit more velocity for his deck, making sure that he can hit those land drops, be able to cast all of those spells. We're going to see Augur of Bolas number three here. We'll see if Sean tries to fight over this with that Singleton Counterflux that we know he has. Yeah, it's so, it's so hard because like, all these cards are both not worth fighting over and devastating. Because yeah. it's all the same stuff, but all of it's so bad. Yep. 
you have to pick and choose correctly. Yeah, Augur, I know it's hard. Yeah, Augur is actually kind of subtly disastrous here. So he's responding here. Okay, so he's responding here. Sean is with uh, Revelation, which Ben is happy to allow him to have because it just gives him a spot to land his pike. And Ben revealed an unsummoned from the Augur of Walsh. Yeah, this is a great spot to reveal pike now. As you saw Ben sift through his graveyard, probably counting to figure yeah. out how big it is. Because to me, it feels like the window is open for, hey, for a pike here. I'm really surprised we're not piking up here. What's he, what do you think he's worried about? It's a good question. It really is. But you see him just come across for three, puts Sean down to 16. You know, maybe this could be an instant where he, maybe he wants to resolve his own revelation for two. You know, not quite sure if that's what Ben's thinking. Maybe he just wants to play pike and say go. With three, you know, with with two glacials and an island up, maybe that's what his plan is here. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess I guess Pike and Equip leaves him exposed to some potential harm. Yeah, something. Yeah. You know, th this way he still has his dissipate shield up, which is probably more important at this point. At least that's what Ben's thinking. Yeah. We see Sean take a draw step here. He did resolve a Sphinx of Revelation 4-2 on Ben's turn, so he does have three fresh new cards. You see him going to play a Moreland Haunt here. Let's see what he can do. He, it looks like he's drawing a Thunderbolt. I believe I recognize that Weatherlight artwork. Ah, uh, Weatherlight. Yeah. The good old days. He's not going to cast it yet. Just passes. Ben takes a draw step. Ben draws a Moreland Haunt. Pretty good draw there. He does check his graveyard for creatures. Also checking the size of the old Rune Chanter's Pike, which we will have confirmation for you guys on how big it is in just a moment from our spotter. As we are counting the instance there. He's going to put it on the Augur. Now, Patrick, really, really quickly, do you like this here on Augur or would you rather have it on Restoration Agent? Um, I think it's a better hedge to put it on Augur Bolas uh, because you're just... You know, one unsummon is really annoying if you don't split up your damage. You know what I mean? Yep. Alright, so there's the Thunderbolt. <coughs> For those of you guys wondering at home, Rune Chanter Spike currently is plus five, and they even got the Weatherlight artwork for you on the screen. Yeah. Oh, Shoebox. You know how to do it just right. Our and director doing an awesome job. We see unsummon here on the Restoration Angel in response to Thunderbolt. Yep, pretty efficient way to. Uh, to use an unsummon here, well, especially with so many augers in play. Now you're going to see Sean finally cast that counterflux. And for Ben, Ben immediately just let it go. Yeah, not worth, you know? not worth it. You know, Ben might have a Ben may have a dispel in his hand. He actually does, and he could have dispelled it. Uh, he could have dispelled the thunderbolt. Yeah, but I think to. I think that's you know with the with him having Pike online, he's in this position of I'm really far ahead. That kind of exchange isn't going to be what and what caused me to lose this game. It's going to be something else. Yes. So I'm happy to let that go. Just keep my counters at the ready, and him being able to answer Pike and with all these instants plus my Moreland Hunt plus my handful of counters is very unlikely. So just whatever you can have that one. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play into something bigger. It's all about just picking and choosing your spots with that yeah. counter magic and those unsummons. Now we do see. Desolate Lighthouse activation here. Clifftop Retreat, the card drawn, along with a Steam Fence that's being discarded. And the last card in Sean's hand is a Thunderbolt. Yep. So a bit of flooding here. Lighthouse is going to help him mitigate that, but can he do it in time when he's facing down a Rune Channer Spike that's so big? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. That's the question. As we see Moreland Haunt activation here from Ben on the end step, a little Spirit Token. A little innocuous, but... Just another... 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 Another point. They all they all add up. And if you guys can see Ben's hand at home, there's a dispel there, there's a dissipate, there's a snapcaster. Ben might be ready to alpha. He yeah, might actually be ready to send in everything. And there's here. a Sphinx of Revelation there too. And now you see Ben is gonna move looks like he's gonna move the pike over to the flyer. Oh yeah, this could be an alpha strike time now. Four, five, I believe six is the count. Four, five. Last card's six. negate. So, so six. six. So plus six here. Ben coming across with a spirit token. 
We do know Sean has that Thunderbolt, but again, not, I mean, Thunderbolt's just going to buy him time. It's not really the best use as we're going to see. Thunderbolt here. Yep. Did leave him. Yeah, that, that gets dis... That actually resolves. No, never mind. I take it back. Yep. Again, he can always... I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that he can just one-shot Sean here with the Pike plus Spirits plus Cassidy Incense when he wants to fight over it. Sure. So there's no point in fighting over something that's a non-lethal attack. Okay. He just... I figure, you know, maybe he, like, dispels and then does something and does something and tries to build it all up. But Sean did have one card left in his hand, so I guess... You know, he's in such a favorable position right now that he doesn't really need to move. Yeah. Which so is your point. We see a Desolate Lighthouse activation here from Sean. Discards a Slayer Stronghold. Plays a Cliffstop Retreat. Now with one card in hand, I have to assume we're going to go for it because he can fight over whatever that last card is. Yep. Now, if you're Ben here, are you making a spirit on the end step, or are you just revelating for four? Making a spirit and going spirit. for kill. Okay. He's got one card in hand. You just move the pike onto your spirit, swing with everything, and that should do it. I don't know what that last card would have to be to get him out of this, but with, with Ben having dissipate plus dispel, no cavern. We see Geist of St. Traff coming in. Now, I know the other card in Sean's hand is a Geist of St. Traff, so you see Ben jump right in front right away. And, they're, they're, and that's yeah. it. That's it. So Ben Lundquist, 2-1. to one. Blue That second Geist. game was a real impressive. Yeah. Just, and, and we saw it with Mark, too, in his first match. It's just all about it's just resource management. All of the resources, though. The cards in his hand. How to use his unsummons. How to use his counter magic. How to use his life total, how to use the opponent's life total against them. We yeah. saw it all. Yeah. I, I, We've seen it from both players today. Right. And, and Ben and Mark, you know, I, I keep harping on this, but I can't say it enough. The efficiency with which they use their mana, looking for ways, especially on the early turns, to tap out as much as possible. Yep. You know, both Sean and Mark's opponent struggle with just, they couldn't deploy all their cards efficiently enough. Sean definitely had more than enough power to win that second game. He just didn't have enough time to get it all out of his hands. Yeah. 